The following presentation was made using a 1984 Pentax PC K1500A color video camera using a Satacon image sensor tube. I'm sure most people watching this are familiar with the three most common sizes of audio cassette tapes. First there was the compact cassette introduced in 1963 by Philips. Then there was the mini cassette introduced in 1967 by Philips which is about a quarter of the size of a regular cassette. And then there was the micro cassette introduced in 1969 by Olympus which is just a little bit smaller than the mini cassette. But what is a mini set? The short answer is, it's complicated. The first mini set recorder was introduced in 1971 by Radio Shack, and despite the name mini set, it actually recorded onto standard compact cassettes, not mini cassettes. And I won't go through every model of mini set recorder that Radio Shack sold because there were dozens over the years, but pay attention to this one because, like I said, it gets confusing. In 1973, they introduced the Mini Set 2, which also recorded onto standard compact cassettes. Then in 1977, they introduced the first Mini Set recorder that actually recorded onto Mini cassettes. And what did they call it? The Micro Mini Set. Again, despite the misleading name, it does not record onto micro cassettes. This model uses mini cassettes. Then in 1979, they introduced their second model of mini cassette recorder, which they called the Micro Mini Set 2. Finally, in 1982, they did actually introduce a mini set recorder that recorded onto micro cassettes. And what did they call it? The Micro Mini Set. But hold on, wait a minute, didn't they just use that name for the past five years for the mini cassette model? That's right, they just switched the name from the mini cassette model to the micro cassette model. They still sold the mini cassette model, but they dropped the micro from its name and just called it the mini set 2. Thankfully, a year later in 1983, they renamed the micro cassette model to just micro, removing any reference to mini in its name to make it clear that it uses micro cassettes. But meanwhile, they also introduced a new model of mini cassette recorder, which they called the mini set. The same name they gave to the original mini set in 1971, which recorded onto standard compact cassettes. So by now they had two models of mini sets and two models of mini set twos, each of which recorded onto different formats. I'm sure it was confusing being a Radio Shack salesman at that time if somebody came in with their mini set or mini set two and they needed tapes for it. You had to ask them which format it actually uses because by the name you couldn't tell. The mini cassette recorder continued until 1988 when it was discontinued and the last mini set recorder of any type that they sold was in 1994 with the mini set 20 which recorded onto standard compact cassettes. And that concludes our confusing history lesson of the Radio Shack realistic mini set recorders. When I travel for business of pleasure, I take my realistic radio recorder from Radio Shack. It's compact and easy to carry. Has a built-in mic, ideal for taping business meetings. And the AM FM radio lets me enjoy music and news. I can even record off the air. And right now, Radio Shack has them on sale. $30 off. A real bargain for people on the go. The realistic radio cassette recorder, just $59.95. Only at Radio Shack. A Tandy Company. With that long and confusing history lesson out of the way, Let's take a look at this Mini Set 10 from 1981. It was introduced in the fall of 1981 as what Radio Shack called their high style ultra compact radio cassette at a price of $89.95. And yes, despite the name Mini Set, this one uses regular cassettes. On the front, we get a tape counter for reset button, a battery and recording level indicator, the cassette compartment, a two and a half inch speaker, AM and FM radio tuning dial, built-in microphone. There are the controls on the top. It has a function selector switch for tape or off, radio, and a sleep timer. These are the cassette transport controls. Pause, fast forward and cue, rewind and review, play, record, and stop and eject. And there's the volume control slider. And finally on the top there's the telescopic whip antenna for the FM radio.
On this side is the tuning dial and the AM and FM band selector switch. And on the other side are your inputs and outputs for a microphone, remote, earphone, and a DC 9 volt adapter. There's the carrying handle. And on the back there's an information sticker and on the bottom is the battery compartment. There's the information sticker on the back. I don't know why it says trade name. I've never seen that before on a Radio Shack product. But it's the Realistic Mini Set 10, model number 14-1000, custom manufactured in Singapore for Radio Shack, a division of Tandy Corporation. On the bottom is the battery compartment for six AA cells. Now let's give the radio a try. It's currently set to the classical music station on FM. Volume control is a little bit scratchy. I need to spray some deoxy into that. Now let's see what else is on FM. It's rocks on 105.5 WDHA. We are the Rock of New Jersey. It's Rock Channel Monday on... Sing along and feel good with that one-of-a-kind blend of music only found on one radio station, Sunny Radio. So it's actually very sensitive on FM. I was picking up plenty of stations. Now let's try AM. Sketchy neighborhood now. What is the defensive weapon you advertise on the... Here's a drivers often try to beat the light at this busy intersection, but the call... In power. On Instagram tonight, Will Smith apologizing to comedian Chris Rock for slapping him on stage last night at the Academy Awards. The MBTA says that service on the Orange Line is shut down in downtown Boston from Back Bay to North Station till further notice. Now I was picking up WBZ from Boston, and I'm here in New Jersey about, what, 200, 250 miles away? So, pretty good reception on AM, at least at night. Now let's try the cassette recorder. Appropriately enough, I have a realistic cassette in it. So first, let's just try recording my own voice through the built-in microphone. This is a recording test of the realistic Miniset 10 cassette recorder radio from 1981 recording using its built-in microphone. It's hard to see that tape counter though. So here's the playback. This is a recording test of the Realistic Miniset 10 cassette recorder radio from 1981 recording using its built-in microphone. So not bad for the built-in microphone. Now I'm recording using an external dynamic microphone. This recorder has automatic level control, so now I'm speaking at arm's length distance to the microphone. And now I'm speaking up close to the microphone to hear if that makes a difference. Now here's a sample of this dynamic handheld microphone connected directly to the video camera, if you want to hear how that sounds. Previously, I was using a Sony camcorder microphone attached to the video camera itself. Of course, you can also record from the radio to the tape. So I'll try that now. And a new mini. They started to dig. We were digging down like a foot at this point from where we were. Turns out, for every three feet, you go down 10,000 years in time. See, the Earth has layers. Kind of like a tree has rings. And every three feet down you go, you're going back in time about 10,000 years. And when you go all the okay, way... Okay, I'll switch back to the tape, rewind a little bit, and play that recording. From where we were? It's out. For every three feet, you go down 10,000 years in time. See, the Earth has layers. Kind of like a tree has rings. And every three feet down you go, you're going back in time about 10,000 years. Sounds pretty good to me. Now let's try music playback with this Sanyo demo tape from around the same age as the cassette recorder. I believe it's from around 1981 or 1982. It is in stereo, but this player will play it in mono. 
I'll start out by playing it through the built-in speaker, but there's a break about halfway through the song, and then I'll switch to a direct hookup. Not exactly the best speed stability, but you have to remember both the tape and the recorder are about 41 years old, and this is still using its original belts. Plus it was never really meant to be a high fidelity music player anyway. There's only one more feature I didn't cover, and that is the sleep timer mode. This works the same as the sleep timer on a clock radio, except instead of using an electronic clock to make it shut off after a certain amount of time, it uses the length of a cassette tape to determine when to shut off. So you put in a cassette tape of your desired length, such as this one would be 45 minutes on one side of a 90 minute cassette. And you switch it to sleep timer mode and you press play, but instead of hearing what's on the tape, you hear the radio playing until it finishes the tape and then the radio will shut off. Halverson's three Norwegian dances. Marianne played violin. Emma Yerby conducting the Bergen Philharmonic. Here's music for strings. It's by WC, his string quartet in G minor, Tokyo String Quartet, right now on WQXR. <laughs> That's it. He shut off the radio when the end of the tape was reached. So that's about it for the Realistic Mini Set 10 from 1981. A very neat little portable radio cassette recorder with an interesting but confusing history of all the different models and cassette formats they used over the years. But this one is certainly a very fine example of what they had to offer back then. But now we know the end is nigh.